Good evening, children. It's Granny McDuff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, there was a teapot who was proud. It was proud it was made of porcelain. It was proud of its long spout. And it was proud of its fine, broad handle. Its spout was in front, and its handle behind, and that was what it talked about. But it never spoke of its lid, for its lid was cracked and full of tiny holes, and the teapot felt we should never talk about our imperfections. Only others do that. The sugar bowl, the cups, the cream pitcher, and the platters. In fact, the entire tea service talked all the time about the defects in the teapot's lid. In fact, they talked much more about this than the fine broad handle and the long spout. And the teapot knew it. I know my imperfections, the teapot told itself. And I know in that knowledge lies my humility and my modesty. We all have defects, but we also have many virtues. The cups have only a handle. The sugar bowl, only a lid. But myself, well, I have both. And I possess a spout. Something they can never have. And that makes me queen of the tea set. I admit that the sugar bowl and the cream pitcher are serving maids of delicacies. But I am the one who rules. I am the one who spreads joy among the thirsty of mankind. Within me, the tea leaves give flavour to the tasteless boiling water. This was the way the teapot thought in its fresh and young life. It sat on a table that was prepared for tea and was lifted by only the most delicate of hands. But that hand was also quite awkward. The teapot was often dropped, and soon enough, the long spout chipped, and the fine broad handle broke off, and the lid was in such poor condition that it's not even worth talking about. After a particularly bad fall, the teapot lay on the floor with the boiling water running out of it. What a shock it got! But worst of all was how the others laughed at it and not at the awkward hand which had dropped it. I shall never be able to forget this, said the teapot when it talked about its past life. They said I was useless now, and stood me in a corner until the next day when they gave me away to an old lady living on a farm. I was quite frightened at first, but then I began to wonder if perhaps now a better life was beginning. They packed me with dirt and planted a flower bulb. Who it was who did this, I do not know. But what was planted was more precious than the tea leaves, the boiling water, my spout or my handle. The bulb which was planted inside me became my heart, my living heart, something I had never had before. There was life in me and it gave me power and it brought me great happiness. The bulb grew sprouts, and it was not long after that that a flower bloomed, and I forgot myself in its beauty. It made me so happy to see how everyone admired it. But alas, one day I heard someone say that such a flower deserved a better pot, and so they broke me in two. And the flower was given a new pot, and they put me out in the yard. And now, here I sit, watching the birds go by, listening to the bees and the wind in the trees, and remembering the end. And now it's time to take a deep breath close our eyes so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. 
Good night, children. <laughs>